Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebra. I'm sure it for you. What is topology, algebraic topology? Who knows really? But honestly, um, what is algebra in some sense? So what is actually this funny Tsarisky topology in algebra? It's kind of a question I would like to address. Keep in mind that the whole point of algebraic geometry should be to translate geometry to algebra. In this case, topology to algebra, whatever. Topology, geometry is the same anyway in some sense. Um, and eventually we need to make the next step. I'm not, I'm not ready yet to make the next step. Maybe you are. I'm certainly not ready yet. I'm still enjoying doing geometry. But eventually we'll do one step further by going one step further and then just geometry motivate algebra. But we actually don't care anymore whether the algebra comes from geometry. But it's kind of a next step, right? Now we're translating geometry into algebra. And the next step, just forget about the geometry in some sense and just do algebra um kind of generate not generate generated is a really good bad word motivated by topology uh geometry of course not topology i have too much topology in this video so anyway um today we just do the first step and just translate what we have seen into algebra uh because somehow algebra is less deceiving i'm going to come back to that uh, later than geometry so the service key topology, and yeah, um, again, I would like to say, don't think about it too much as a topology. It's like, it's kind of a bad example of a topology. Um, but anyway, it was the following. Um, the closed sets are varieties and the open sets, this was supposed to be an open, the open sets um, are, well, complements. Of varieties and the closed sets are really tiny they're the varieties like like this picture here the open sets is a complement so they're usually very very large and yeah so that's the uh, sorry topology and it's really tailor-made to work for varieties so again don't take the word topology too serious here it's just it's just what it is and it seems to work how it actually that does work with respect to what the varieties do and yeah, what we do, what we should do all the time as algebraic geometers, so we are now all algebraic geometers, um, is to translate everything into algebra. And eventually we will become fancy algebraic geometers, as I said, and then we will kind of forget about the geometry altogether. Um, yeah, so that's that's a goal, and it's a lot of fun uh, along the way. So as I said, usually I don't like to think about the Zariski topology as a topology, so a lot of notions from topology are just nonsense, not nonsensical, but they are not really useful for studying Tsarisky topology, with a few exceptions. And yeah, so here are the few exceptions. For example, irreducible, which is really just the opposite of reducible. And reducible is, well, you can decompose it into two different spaces. Similarly, uh, connected, well, you can decompose it into two different spaces, which don't intersect at all. So here's an example. I have this variety here, I have a circle, I have this variety here, I have a hyperbola. They themselves are both connected, as you can see, and irreducible, well, irreducible is a little bit more difficult to see, the hyperbola, well, we all believe that the circle is irreducible, right? But the hyperbola is indeed also irreducible. It's a bit more difficult to see, but kind of one side determines the other. Anyway, so they are both irreducible and connected but if you take them together you have something that is neither irreducible nor connected it's well reducible and disconnected disconnected yeah makes sense we can see that uh reducible yeah i could kind of we could take it apart into into those little subsets here yeah, just be careful that this the the hyperbola actually the two sides of the hyperbola belong together show you a much better way of checking that uh later on but for now this is just what it is um, kind of whenever you think it's irreducible and or uh, sorry reducible and unconnected it probably is and uh, this actually really makes some kind of sense those, those notions come from topology and they are kind of the right things to consider also for this Starisky topology as I said most other notions from topology you probably forget about them with respect to the risky topology the risky topology is just too weird as a topology. Let's just say it how it is. Anyway, back to algebra. So here's a reminder. Uh, one of the main theorems we have seen so far, the Nullstellensatz, 
which identifies varieties with a certain type of ideals with a really beautiful correspondence between uh, algebra and geometry. And yeah, and just as a reminder, and we'll see some more statements along uh, the, the way in a second, if we have a variety, um, so maybe I should have put some brackets here, then uh, the coordinate ring is just the polynomial ring mod of by the ideal generic by the variety. Okay, and the point is we can pass information from geometry to, to algebra because the polynomial ring type object is algebra and the variety type object is geometry. Sure, so we want to do that, and yeah, we have now there's a risky topology on one side, so we should want to pass it to the other side. Makes some sense, I guess. And it, that works really, really, really well. Yeah? So if you go from geometry to algebra, for example, uh, keep in mind whenever I'm mentioning the null Stellensatz or some version of the null Stellensatz, my, my field should be algebraically closed. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, so this just really means I'm really secretly working over the complex numbers. If you find any other interesting algebraically closed field, let me know. But the complex numbers are certainly the, the most prominent one. Anyway, so you get those statements. So if you have, uh, now I swap form, by the way, this was kind of general topology. So I called my spaces X, Y, and Z. And now we're doing varieties. So I call my spaces V, W, something like that. So if you have a disconnected variety, then the coordinate rings are, for example, just isomorphisms up to a uh, trivial operation on the coordinate rings, just a product. Product just means do it component-wise, so it's really a trivial operation on the coordinate ring. The irreducible ones, well, correspond to integral domains on the other side. Fields, if you want. If you don't know what an integral domain is, a field. <laughs> Let's just say a field. Um, and the irreducible varieties, well, correspond to prime ideals. You have a nice notion on one side goes to the nice notion on the other side. And the decomposition of a variety, let's say, into, into irreducible components, correspond to kind of the minimal prime ideals, kind of deco decomposition of the ideal into minimal prime ideals. So what's really happening here is kind of really beautiful. We have kind of a variety, a nice variety is mapped to a nice type of uh, algebra object, namely a prime ideal. And prime ideal, just as a reminder, those ideals where you can't factor, so like a prime number, so you can't factor and just makes sense in more generality than just prime numbers. You can just talk about prime ideals in, um, well, in this case, in the polynomial ring. Really beautiful correspondence, sending a circle to a prime ideal and sending a prime ideal to a circle, in this case, kind of a correspondence from left to right. That's the whole point of algebraic geometry, right? This is the heart of algebraic geometry. That's what we would like to explore further. And kind of, maybe I'm not really a geometer, maybe I'm more algebraized. I feel like the real point here is to translate something you would like to understand, geometry, into something you can understand, algebra. Because algebra is somehow much easier. You feed it in a machine, for example, and the machine will tell you whatever, that gives you the decomposition of your ideals or something like that. While on the level of geometry, that might be a bit trickier. Yeah, so here's an example. So we had this picture before, uh, our little close picture here. And well, this is a coordinate that I gave it. Just just for, forget the numbers. I just wanted a nice picture. Doesn't matter. But anyway, this is a coordinate. Uh, so equals to zero. Uh, so equals to zero. Uh, these are the coordinates. And this variety is actually irreducible. But it somewhat doesn't look like it's irreducible, right? It has a factor here and a factor here. How is that irreducible? Well, the way to check that is to check that the ideal is prime. It's not so difficult. You just essentially need to make sure that you can't factor that and there are algorithms that can do it. So depending whether you run certain computer algebra systems, you can just feed it in the machine and just ask, is prime? And it will say, nope, it's not. It's not too difficult. And But what the fuck is... Oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Uh, what is going on here? Well, the problem is I'm only drawing real pictures but actually, I want to work over the complex numbers. So when the complex numbers, like a four-dimensional picture, you would be able to see that these are two, not two different things, but they actually come together. But over the real pictures, the real picture that I'm always drawing, that's always a bit difficult. And yeah, the picture might be deceiving because I'm drawing real pictures when I really should draw complex pictures. So 
So if you want to know that, my, my, my main issue with algebraic geometry, it's not algebraic geometry's fault, my fault, uh, the, my main issue is always that you actually really want to work over the real numbers because you want to draw pictures. Pictures are just good, uh, but you somehow can't. So a lot of things are just not good over the real numbers and you want to go, need to go to the complex numbers. But a polynomial in the complex numbers is already like a difficult to, draw, to illustrate piece. So I somehow can't do that. Yeah, my apologies. But that's why the algebra comes as a saver. Um, because instead of drawing the picture, you just look at the ideal and check properties of the ideal, which tells you um, then what type of object you actually see. Right? The picture might be deceiving in this case. I hope that makes some sense. Keep in mind, I might be, I'm usually a little bit um, not quite super precise when it comes to this, but most of the time my underlying field should actually be algebraically close, just to avoid issues of this form. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.